everybody. Oh, I love it. I love it. Everybody's here. <laughs> all right, I'm going to tell you all a little story. When I was a little girl, I dreamed of having a fairy tale wedding. And I did. I had a fairy tale wedding. It was written by Brothers Grimm. <laughs> <laughs> we eloped. It was his idea. He said, Don't worry about it, babe. I'll make all the arrangements. So I didn't worry about it. The only witness to our festivities was, besides the pastor, was my brother and my bridesmaids. My brother offered to drive us to the church. So I was riding shotgun, and my husband's in the back seat, my husband-to-be. He is sipping from a bottle of Strawberry Boone's Farm, <laughs> singing. Aki, one more hour and my life will be through. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, I never felt so loved. <laughs> well, my bridesmaid was the only person that actually got there on time. She was all decked out in a black dress with leopard print on the collar and cuffs. <laughs> Not exactly the color scheme that I had dreamed of as a child. I think she thought she was going to a funeral. <laughs> Maybe she was. Well, the ceremony itself was pretty uneventful. You know, the pastor looked out at the congregation of no one. <laughs> and he said, is there anyone here who objects? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Unfortunately, everyone held their peace. <laughs> well, we said our I do's. He slipped a ring on my finger. He immediately turned my finger green. A few years later, I sold it to a guy scrapping copper. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a little reception at my uh, bridesmaid's house. You know, toasted to the bride and groom. And I got tired and fell asleep on her couch. And when I woke, she was gone. And my husband was gone. He was nowhere in sight, but he left me a little present. My bridesmaid and my father-in-law in the corner playing tonsil tag. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized they're going to get more action on my wedding night than I am. <laughs> Well, years passed. I had two of the greatest kids ever. Got rid of about 180 pounds of dead weight, and I became a single mom. My kids grew up, and we went on a vacation. We all wanted to go to Jamaica. So we went to Jamaica. I wanted to go to the beach, maybe do a little sightseeing, you know, a little shopping. They wanted to see the Bob Marley Mausoleum. <laughs> now, you can't say it without going, the Bob Marley Mausoleum, Mom. <laughs> so off we went on this rickety old bus up the mountain. This bus was so rickety, so awful. 
rolling death trap. It didn't have any air. So the only air that you got on this trip was from a, an open window. And the smell of the air coming through that open window was thick with the crop that is grown <laughs> in that area. <laughs> you all sound like you know what crop is grown in that area. Well, if you don't, it's weed. <laughs> so we get off the bus, we start to get off the bus, we're up the mountain, and the bus driver looks at us and he warns us, he says, if you're going to partake, don't eat the whole brownie. <laughs> I wasn't listening. <laughs> so we are off the bus and getting ready to go in to see the Bob Marley Mausoleum Mon. And my son walks up to me and he hands me a piece of cake. And he says, here, Mom, hold this. Now, do I look like I hold cake? <laughs> <laughs> really? It was really tasty. It had kind of an earthy taste to it. Well, we went to see the mausoleum. It's probably the lamest excuse for a uh, resting place for one of the greatest artists of our time. And we headed back down the mountain. But before we boarded the bus, I looked off in the distance. And I could see for miles. <laughs> I could see birds in the tops of trees. I could see things that I don't think were even there. <laughs> And I was starving. <laughs> we went back, went back to our room that night, and I ordered two entrees, <laughs> room service, you know, about 12 desserts. <laughs> now my sweet, sweet son is my drug dealer. <laughs> Thank you all on Pepsi Cola. <laughs>